The history of this campus dates back to 1862, when President Abraham Lincoln designated the University of Illinois as one of 37 public land-grant institutions. As for me, I've been around these parts nearly as long as our great university has existed. In fact, I was just 15 when I attended my first classes, just nine years after it first opened. Matter of fact, I was born right here in Champaign-Urbana, darn near in the shadow of where our picturesque stadium now stands. I played on the university's first football team way back in 18 and 90. I attended Dartmouth out east for a couple of years after I got my diploma, intending to become a doctor. But when President Draper wrote me a letter in 1895 asking me to return home to coach the Illini boys, I jumped at the chance. Coached the football team for five years, but my first love was baseball. We won quite a few championships along the way, but I tried to teach the boys more than how to block or tackle or how to turn a double play. We stressed competition, but always in the spirit of fair play and sportsmanship. That applied to our fans too. There was never ever any place for cheating or disrespecting our opponents. Our goal was always to play courageously to the last. If we won, we'd do it without boasting. And if we'd lost, we'd do it without any excuses. For years and years, we hosted our events at Illinois Field, just north of the old gym on Springfield. When the Great War took place back in the teens, many of our boys were proud to stand and serve. Of the nearly 10,000 faculty, staff, and students we sent, sadly, 183 men and one woman lost their lives. In 1921, Zupp and I decided that we needed a stadium that would serve as a memorial to honor them. We called a meeting in the old gym annex, and within 10 minutes we raised about a third of the two and a half million dollars we needed. I'm proud to say that every single one of those brave souls who paid the supreme price in the war is honored in the east and west colonnades of Memorial Stadium. Just 14 months after we broke ground, we reopened the stadium to the public. A red-headed youngster from Wheaton by the name of Grange scored the very first touchdown that day. We dedicated the facility in October of 24 against the Michigan Wolverines, and oh what a day it was. Ghost men hardly ever touched number 77 all day. Up until that time, George Hallis had been our greatest athlete, playing football, baseball, and basketball. But among Illini, a champagne boy named Harold Osborne came along and won a couple of Olympic gold medals for America's track and field team. And on the wrestling mat, old Allie Morrison beat everyone that the Western Conference threw at him. Then he went to the Olympics in Amsterdam and won gold. The 1930s featured a young man from Harvey Thornton High School named Boudreaux. Now Lou was a terrific basketball player, but he was an even better shortstop. In 41, 42, Doug Mills had a whale of a basketball team. Andy Phillip was probably the best of them, but Vance, Smiley, Mankey, and Matisson could all shoot the ball. Gee whiz, they were something. When Zupp retired after the 41 season, Coach Elliott took over. He recruited some young men who could run and kick and block. We represented our conference out in Pasadena in 47 and 52, when both of those Rose Bowl games we did. Our other teams had a share of terrific athletes in the 40s and 50s. AB was one of them. Herb was another. Don't forget Manny. He's contributed in so many ways. When Coach Ray retired, Pete Elliott took the orange and blue to the top in 63. 
There was one player in particular that was unlike any other. Don't know that we've ever had a tougher player than number 50. In the 70s, we welcomed women into the varsity ranks. Carroll brought in some fine coaches, and they recruited some talented young ladies. Nancy made the Olympic team. Mary ruled over the roost at Old Huff Hall. Renee could knock that little white ball around. And Tanya won about as many titles as anyone we've ever had. Later, Perdita came along. She seemed unbeatable. That's not to say that our boys didn't have their time in the sun, too. Craig won every Big Ten cross-country race he ever ran. And old Strick, why he was one of the conference's best ever golfers. We've had some dandy tennis players over the years, but Coach Tiley's athletes were especially good. Won a national title that surprised everybody. Over at the Assembly Hall, pardon me, the State Farm Center, we had a couple of basketball teams that were extra special. Nick was one of those kids they called the Flying Illini. Then about 15 years later, D and Darren's team won 29 games in a row. They had a comeback for the ages up in Chicago, then nearly won the whole shooting match against those Carolina boys down in St. Louis. Oh yeah, don't let me forget about one of our terrific athletes who gave back to his alma mater tenfold. No one's been more loyal than Jerry. Nowadays, we've got an Illini in the chair where I once sat. With wonderful people like Coach Small, Lovey, Nancy, Coach Underwood. Good times will soon be coming back to campus. As Josh often says, we will win. Yes, sir, this university has been awfully good to me and a whole lot of other folks. Within the lyrics of our ages old school song, we pledge our loyalty. I'm especially fond of the last two stanzas. Fling out that dear old flag of orange and blue. Lead on your sons and daughters fighting for you. Like men of old on giants placing reliance, shouting defiance, Oski wow wow. Amid the broad green fields that nourish our land, for honest labor and learning we stand, and unto thee we pledge our heart and hand. Dear alma mater, Illinois.